Yeah, so hi guys. I hope you are doing well. In today's video, I wanted to keep, I, I want to keep it short. I want to discuss with you why it is important for you to consider transiting or career change from whatever you are doing and adding a bit of climate change into what you are doing already or you know completely trying to move away from what you are doing and come into the field of climate change. So for the last one and a half years, a lot of people have been asking me how I managed to transition from the agriculture sector into the climate change sector. And for those who don't know, my background is strongly based on you know my academic background, which is in agriculture and rural development. For the past close to seven years, I have worked in the field of you know agricultural mechanization. I worked as you know as an agronomist, but as I have mentioned, one and a half years ago. I moved completely from the agriculture sector and now I work in the climate change field to be more specific into climate financing, more specific again into carbon markets. And for those who don't know about carbon markets, is a mechanism that was designed many years ago to try and mobilize financing from developed economies into developing countries. Because as you can imagine, a lot of things have been done in the world. Some economies have developed and thrived, but the lower the, the global south is still struggling with some of the most basic things like uh, access to energy, access to you know to education and access to health. But we continue to be suppressed, people in the global south, not because we are not capable to lift ourselves up, but we continue to be suppressed because there is not what we call just growth or just transition. Today we talk so much about climate change and this climate change means that there are so many things that are happening within our environment that are beyond our control and they are happening because development has occurred in the global north. These things are happening because China has industrialized we are having floods in my village because the US is industrializing too much and fab, um, you know, producing a lot of motor vehicles and developing their economies. The economic activities of some countries are causing the global south communities to struggle so much and you know, derailing, derail, de derailing as well as delaying their growth. And that's why People who sat down in the early 2000s and thought about some mechanisms that could facilitate just growth and just transition through the support of people who are driving, you know, by overstepping others. So by overstepping, it doesn't literally mean that the U.S. came to Kenya and took something from us, but it means that they are doing something that is affecting my environment to grow as a country and to grow as an individual. So carbon markets were designed to be a mechanism through which money in at scale, at, at scale, not small money, money at scale can be mobilized into Africa, into the global south, in Southeast Asia, into Latin America to facilitate these economies, you know, to grow faster and also on this other side, these economies that are quite developed, when they allocate some money to Africa to support our green growth, they are also allocating budgets and feeling the heat, they are feeling the cost of their polluting economic activities. So in the long term, when they think about the cost they have to allocate for the emissions they are releasing into the environment, at some point, if anything, if they decide not to allocate that money to Africa for their emissions, then they could decide that they will allocate that money for their international uh, for their internal uh, transition. If they needed to invest in emission reductions, if they needed to do some more innovation or change the technologies they are using with regard to procurement of power or power efficiency, it would be very easy for them to pick part of the budget they have been allocating to carbon credits purchase 
and utilize that for their own internal um, energy um, uh, emission reductions. So in one way or the other, when nobody knew what was the right way for people to act against their emissions, carbon credits created the path. And definitely it is always said that carbon credit is not the end. It's a means for the planet and for ecosystem players to get into cleaner growth. So let us leave that aside. So carbon markets and climate change is a very interesting space. And I would encourage anyone to come into it because it is a field that has quite a huge demand. Ask me for the one and a half years I have been into this space. I have been, you know, been boxed by so many, um, I would say, headhunters who were asking me for a conversation about opportunities they have had. So, and one other thing is that if even when you interact with um, people who, are, who have worked in the climate change space for decades, you will come to realize that almost everyone is on a learning path. Nobody ever feels like they have learned everything because the climate change space is so dynamic. Every day there are new policies, there are new regulations, there are new methodologies, there are new discoveries, you know, that are being developed. And if you are not up to speed with the new developments, then you might be left behind. Something else that is so important about climate change is the level of transparency. Uh, compared to what I have seen before in the agrochemical industry and in the agricultural mechanization, there is so much protectionism of information, uh, you know, data privacy and technology secrecy. So nobody wants to reveal what they are doing because, of course, competition is out there. But when you come into climate change, anything that you would want to know about any type of project, you will get it as long as you know where to go and look for that information. The the basic nature of climate change space is to promote integrity, to promote transparency, and to promote disclosures. That is why every company that is taking action to combat climate change, to reduce their emissions, to promote social cohesion and social integrity and inclusion and diversity appreciation, all of those things, companies are encouraged to communicate transparently actions that they are taking towards fighting climate change within their organization, within the country, and, you know, at the scale of the globe. So transparency, disclosures, and everything is very, very much encouraged to be published there in public. That's why today you'll see a lot of um, ESG reports, company announcing, companies, you know, seeing what they are doing on matters of climate change mitigation. The other thing that is so important about climate change is that... Um, it is starting to become a common practice, especially in Africa. So in Europe, probably it has been there for many years in the US, but in Africa, companies are starting to internalize, you know, climate change aspects. You will find a climate change finance um, specialist. You will find, you know, a lot of innovations around, um, you know, the whole thinking right now within corporations must have an aspect of climate change consideration. So your next level of technology, they want to know what is the level of their emissions. The next financing that you are going to look for 